everybody. Welcome to the Hollywood Reporter Presents. I will be your moderator today, Lonnie Love, and I am so excited about this panel. It's the one and only RuPaul Charles and Michelle, ooh, Michelle Passage. I've already been drinking, Michelle. Hi, guys. <laughs> Lonnie. I still, I still call her Michelle Visage. Happens Michelle. all the time. Oh. <laughs> Happens all the time. You know what? Thank you for having, you know, taking the time to have this wonderful conversation because I want to talk about the wonderful season 13. First of all, congratulations. It was an amazing season. Rue, how did you feel about it? Oh, I love it. I, I'm a big fan of this show, Drag Race. I love the queens. I love the challenges. And uh, I'm just so honored to be here and to be amongst all these incredible, beautiful creatures. And of course, we're talking about Michelle Visage. And, uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, Michelle, this was an unusual um, taping because we were in a pandemic. Can you talk a little bit about that and the stress that you guys had with this production, but you still killed it? Uh, amen to that. You know, first and foremost, I think when we found out that we were going to go ahead with the production, it, for me, it was like, really? You know, because we were all so shell-shocked, obviously not leaving our houses, uh, not going to the grocery store. And if we did, you know, gloves, full PPE, like we were frontline workers. And uh, when they said they were going to do it, let me tell you how looked after and we know this, Lonnie, because you've done the show, how looked after you are in this set. World of Wonder, the production company, has done such an incredible job with not only testing us three to four times a week, but with having the staff in place, you know, the COVID regulators, the, the COVID police, as we call them on set, uh, the, the medical issues, you know, the people, the staff that we need are always here. Everything was fully cleaned due to COVID protocols and things like that. So with that said, that in place, we thought, plexiglass between us and 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 there wasn't a moment that I didn't feel protected and the queens were just as protected if not more you know they're in a bubble to begin with and they've only got each other and and the people that are around them so it was almost like um like a like we were in a different world in a different planet it was our own little safe bubble and mm -hmm. it was joy that we were able to do it every single day and then it came out and you could feel the joy. It was almost heightened. This competition, season 13, was even another level of excitement and joy and deepness. And it meant something because we were doing it in the midst of a global pandemic. And it was done fully the right way. Because, I mean, RuPaul, how does it feel? I mean, you were one of the few shows that by the time the fall came, it was actually new. I mean, that is a great you know, that's just a feat among itself and nobody got COVID. Yeah, praise we've God. been, yeah, no, yes, praise God. Uh, we were actually in production in London when it all, the, the pandemic broke out and we had to stop production there. We came back to the US. I think we were dead. We were at home for about two and a half months, maybe less. And I'm not sure before we started this, but we got into production and it was it was perfect because we are in this bubble. And it's really it's this core group of people. As you know, uh, we all work together. We all want to keep each other uh, safe. So um, I, I really couldn't tell uh, anything had changed because it was the same people who came to work. Right. And we did our thing because we love this show and we we want we want we're here to entertain. And it was the genius of rotating the judges. That's how I was blessed to do four times. And it was just a wonderful experience. It gave me something to do during isolation. So thank you. Thank you <laughs> to the crew, you know, and your show has been nominated for a number of below the line Emmys, including production design, editing, um, hair and makeup. Talk about how many people it takes to put a show on like this together and how you all work together, Rue. Well, you know, I don't know anything about numbers or mathematics. So <laughs> Michelle's probably the one that asked. Um, it, I, 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 you know, uh, I don't, I have no idea. Michelle, you know the answer to Listen, this. Listen, I think at the end of the day, we are nothing without the crew and the team, yes. you know? People 
always in front of the camera, the cast, they, and you know this, Lonnie, they always get the kudos. They always get the accolades. And it's not just about the nominations and the awards. It's us saying thank you. Rue gets up there at the end of every series and, and every season and thanks to everybody because there's times and we take this for granted. You'll look at the stage and you'll go, wow, that looks great. And you don't think to go art department, that was unbelievable. Yes. So costume, hair, makeup, I mean, drag queens. This is a drag production. We are nothing without those, you know, the, the aesthetic ones. But I mean, it's lighting. Our lighting people, honey, <laughs> I combined are about 740 years old. Exactly. <laughs> we have the best lighting. The editors, all the cameramen, like, and there's women in there too, the camera department, the art department. We could not in any way do yep. any of the show without that team behind the scenes. That team made me look like I was 20 years old. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Thank you for making this dark-skinned girl look like she's 20. You're like, because lighting is everything. Lighting everything. is everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, RuPaul, you continue to stun with the grace and the glamour every week you have on a, I mean, you was having some fly outfits. <laughs> I want to know, you know, that takes a lot. How do you maintain this high aesthetic and the artistic standard? How do you maintain that? Well, it, it does go back. Thank you for that. It goes back to the people I work with. You know, I've been working with Zaldi, who's been, who's, I think he's snatched three uh, trophies, three Emmys already. I've been working with Zaldi since 1992. He knows wow. what I can wear. He knows uh, everything ab about my body and what works for me. And he's just brilliant. And of course, Raven, who's also nominated, uh, knows how to do the face. And, and uh, Curtis knows how to do the hair. So, you know, I'm surrounded by people who, who make me look good. And then uh, my part is I just don't eat bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to do. <laughs> yeah, is that true? <laughs> Um, you know, Rue loves nuts. Don't get dirty. Uh -huh. Actually make nuts, too. but yeah. there's not a lot of bread in sight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, and the thing about you, M Michelle, is that you're known as the tough love judge. Can I tell you, just watching you work the four times that I was on that panel and also when we did the, um, the comedy uh, bit, you are fabulous. You know how to balance both, you know, the good, but you're also encouraging. How do you do that? You know, thank you, Lonnie. That's really, really sweet. And I love working with you. So it, it was actually a, a fun and, and joyous experience. But my mother was a, a tough Jewish woman who grew up in the streets of Brooklyn. And she kind of prepared me for the world. She never sugarcoated anything. Um, she might have been perceived as mean, but she wasn't mean. It was more like, I'm going to prepare you for the world because the world is not what you think it is. So here's the reality. If you're prepared, you're going to be able to land on your feet every time, you know, and, and I think we do our kids a disservice when we don't set them up for the world out there. So I treat these queens like they're my kids. I don't want to just sugarcoat them and be like, oh my God, that was perfect when it wasn't. Then what are they going to work for? Because they think, you know, they're perfect. No, none of us are perfect. Perfection doesn't exist. So how can we make this better and do it from a place of love? And that's kind of the way I raise my kids, the way I was raised. I treat them like my, like I was talking to my kids. And that's how it works, I think. I hope. Some of them get pissed. But then when they, they get don't. off the show and they watch it, they realize that there was a reason for it. But, and I can attest to seeing week after week, being on that judging panel that they would either take your advice, you know, which you all give great advice and you could see them either improve or you could see them get challenged more. I mean, it really truly is a wonderful competition and people yeah. of all aspects can learn from it. So I really, really appreciate that, you know. Uh -huh. You know, other competition shows, the contestants usually focus on like one talent, but on Drag Race, it's everything. I That's mean, right. it's something, something totally different every week. How do you keep finding, you know, talent that can keep up with the challenges? Well, you know, it usually, um, it definitely helps when the contestant is a showgirl who works in clubs 
you know, six, seven nights a week. Who, because if you are in that, in that realm of, of the business, uh, you have to figure out a way to make things work. Things pop up here and there and you have to work it out. And so our challenges are designed to exercise that talent that they have to um, be able to, um, to problem solve. You know, when I was doing nightclubs, I considered myself the MacGyver of drag, you know, because, <laughs> you know, you go to a hotel uh, room somewhere and the lighting is terrible. I would travel with my own lighting. I, wow. I would make it work. Whatever it took, I would make it work. Sometimes as a wardrobe mis uh, malfunction and you have to quick be quick on your toes and, and, and work it out. So all of our challenges are really designed to uh, um, see what wh what the girls are working with um, mentally, physically, uh, how they're able to um, balance themselves. Because I think in life, um, having an equal, uh, balanced equali uh, equilibrium is, is what it's all about. Because life comes at you from all different directions. And uh, you have to be willing and able to, uh, to meet the challenge. Well, let's talk about the challenge of having all of these queens. And then by episode 14, you whittled it down to four. And it was one of the best episodes in Drag Race history. Um, it, we titled it the lucky episode. Talk mm -hmm. about each of the final four queens. You know, you got, got Mick, Candy Muse, Rose, and Simone. Talk about the unique qualities that they brought to the show to get to that final four. Well, it's interesting because they're all different genres of of drag. And there are so many genres of drag out there. In fact, we haven't had every genre of drag on our show. But um, the final four uh, represented so much, you know, uh, uh, Candy Muse, who is from the Brisons. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, she is a uniquely hilarious and uniquely herself. And uh, she's, you know, she's a thick girl who knows how to pull it together. And she's so much fun to walk, watch. You just want to root for her. And then, yeah. of course, got Mick, so smart. He is a uh, uh, just an uber talent that is so much fun to work with. Um, we're working with Got Mick right now on another project, and just so easy and so smart. My favorite part of of Got Mick was the banter that we would do. It just it made it so fun. And of course, uh, uh, Rosé is a real pro. Rosé, professional. professional, you know, uh, grew up in, in music theater, knows how to, her way around uh, uh, the stage and, and what to do and how to deliver. And of course, our champion, uh, uh, Simone. Who is, I was watching Judge Judy the other day and I saw that some one of the litigants was from Conway, Arkansas, which is, <laughs> no. which is where Simone is from. And, and they... <laughs> And the litigants say they was country. <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, wow, uh, Conway, Arkansas can produce a Simone and be a, a, a world champion like that and with such poise and so graceful. And the looks, I mean, this kid was yes. born to do drag and it's still a joy to be around. I mean, come, I mean, Michelle, the, the, those final four, the fashion was out of this world. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, and like Ruth said, Lonnie, they were all so different and they all brought a whole different vibe. And that is not only a joy to judge, but it's also amazing to watch, like to see mm -hmm. them come out, how they think things, these looks up, you know, and, and some of them look really complicated. Some of them don't look complicated, but they work. And what they all are, are self-expressive. They explain who they are. The minute they come out on that stage, you go, yep, this is Simone. Yep, this is Scott Mick. And it's amazing when these kids hit their stride and figure out who they really are. And, and season 13 just so happened to be a very, very heavy fashion season. Like, you know, it wasn't, it was the combination of fashion and drag. And that's kind of where drag is heading, where, you know, it didn't definitely did not start that way. And a lot of kids can't really even afford to be the, the fashion. But, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's never really about money. It's about sense of style. And it's about how you put things together and proportion and understanding fit 
And that's really what it's about. And these kids, those top four, they all had it. They had the gift of knowing what works for them. Well, one of my favorite parts of that episode, the lucky episode, not only was we're going to get to the video, but when you two sat down with each of the four finalists and you spoke to them and Rue, you always give that pep talk. I mean, where does that come from? You know, um, that comes from having to give myself that pep talk. You know, there's uh, the truth is there's really only one of us here on this planet. We're all connected. And so uh, a lot of times I have to give someone else a pep talk so I can hear it myself, so I can remind myself of what the truth is. Because through, uh, through all these contestants, year after year, you know, I see myself in each of them. And I think the audience uh, uh, feels the same way. We all root for these kids because they represent the dreamer in all of us. They represent uh, the part of us that other people said, you know, you can't do that. And, um, and I say year after year, our show is about the tenacity of the human spirit. And I'm in love with the human spirit and what the human spirit can achieve. And, uh, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge the saboteur that is always lurking. It does, it never goes away. You can sort of, you can, um, uh, you can sort of, you know, push it to the side momentarily, um, um, but it's always there. So the pep talk is to remind people who they really, really are. And who you are is an extension of the power that created the whole universe. Some people cannot take that information, but it's important to remind the ones who can take that information uh, you know, uh, it's amazing what humans can do. Uh, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge the, uh, the saboteur. Definitely. Cause Michelle, when you, there was one part where you pulled out the, the, um, the, the pictures of when they were little and you yeah. asked, I'm, oh, kill yeah. me with that. Yeah. Yeah. Kill me with that. Yeah. You every know? time, every time that happens, uh, you know, it, it reminds each of us to, um, to be mindful of the child who lives inside of us. Because so many of us, um, you know, push that voice down. We push that voice down and we try to trudge ahead because that voice represents the real us, the sensitive us. Uh, but you, 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 it's important as adults to, to look after that child. So you yeah. see, I mean, you see, you see it every day, you know, you see people acting out their inner child acting out and they're not even aware of it. They're not even aware that they, it's their inner child that's acting out. And we see it, honey, I, I drive, I take, I take the 101 to the 170 to the 405 <laughs> to, the, you know, and so I see people acting up. <laughs> You're taking all the freeways, everybody acting up. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the um, other things that I really enjoyed was the Lucky Music video. It was one of the highlights of season 13. Can you talk about how you collaborated with the songwriters and the choreographers and the queens to bring this all to life? You know, every season we, we, we do a lot of music on our show and we've been working with um, uh, Freddie and Leland uh, uh, for many years on, on our songs. We have our rusicals, we have our music videos and Lucky, uh, the song Lucky happens to be one of my favorites because it's mm -hmm. so joyous and the production, listen, our art department, uh, the, the camera operators, everybody. It oh my sick. God, it looks so good. It looks so oh. good. Year after year, um, these productions we, we put on within our show uh, look so, so good. And Lucky just happens to be a, a really catchy song. And uh, I, I couldn't be more, more proud of it. Definitely. How did you feel about it, Michelle? Oh, it was so fun watching it. Because you're a music girl. You know, you, yes. you originally... Yes, that's where I started. And to watch these kids do that, you know, for me, you're here at the final four and these huge sets are behind them. They've got choreography to do. They have recorded their lyrics that they wrote. They put it in and they bring it to life. And when you see them click in and they lock into their bodies and you see it come to life on camera, it is the most rewarding thing. I'll sit there watching. They can't hear me. They can't see me. And I'm watching from, you know, the off camera and I'm just like, ah! Because it's so exciting to see it actually come to fruition. That moment, they manifested it and they are living it. It's really, really exciting. And Lucky just happens to be one of the best. Yeah. You know, you all worked so hard 
on these shows. I mean, you you do you 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 tape a whole season, then you tape all stars. Let's not let's not forget about Untucked was yeah. is an extension. I want to move away from that and ask, what do y'all do for fun? <laughs> 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 well, we, we work all the time. Michelle and I have been working together for a long, long time, and uh, we enjoy work. In fact, that is fun for us because we get to, we get to work with our friends. You know, I've known Michelle since the East Village uh, like 300 years ago. And then, you know, the producers <laughs> here, Randy and Fenton and, and Tom, I've known them all that time. It's, it's crazy. So we're very, very fortunate to be able to come to work every day and, and have fun and work with our friends, but you know, there isn't a lot of off time, you know, uh, early in the morning, I get up very early morning. I like to ride my bike around uh, Hollywood and Beverly Hills and West Hollywood at four o'clock in the morning. That's fun for me. Sometimes I'll go hiking. Uh, you know, I have uh, machines, uh, you know, treadmills and stuff at the house. That's fun. I blast the music, but mostly we're working. What about you, Michelle? Well, I'll tell you what's not fun, riding my bike at 4 a.m. Exactly. Not fun, <laughs> Lonnie. Only room nope. off. <laughs> yeah, don't enjoy that. I'm a mother. I do enjoy doing stuff with my family, my husband, my kids. I, I They're off in college. So now when they're back, I like to do stuff with them. But really, um, I love to um, just be, I think as Ruth said it, we're, we're never home. We're always working. And, and being able to work on a show, as you know, Lonnie, work on a show that is so much fun that you love seeing the people you work with. You can't wait to see them. You work with your best friend. That's a gift. That's an actual gift. So that's a joy to come to work. It's, and, and I try to say to people, you know, who kind of ask what the secret to happiness is. One of the big keys and secrets is doing something that brings you joy for a living, doing something that you love to do. Not everybody's able to do that. Not everybody's lucky enough to be able to do that. But if you can't do that for a living, try to find it outside of that. It's about happiness and joy. And I love what I do. Um, I also love finding a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> well, Michelle, tell me, you know, you Michelle also, since she was on Strictly Come Dancing in the UK, has continued to uh, enjoy ballroom dancing. And she yeah. does that. And she oh. also uh, she is an avid collector of of eyeglasses. And you see some of those eyeglasses on our show. Uh, yeah. But I, I, we've lost count. Michelle has lost count at how many eyeglasses she has bought online in, in different countries. It's really, really crazy. And I think she's probably in need of a 12 step program. I am in need of an intervention, but it's, it's again, that's something that brings me joy. So if we're in another country, I will go off and go to like, you know, thrift shops or whatever, trying to find some old glasses that somebody's getting rid of for 99 cents. I bring them home. I clean them up. I get my prescription put in. It, it's like a hunt for me. I'm like an antique dealer. Like I look for these things. It brings me so much joy because you feel like there is an adrenaline that you get. There's a rush that it's like, oh, I found something that nobody has. It's that thrill. And I love it. It's part of my face. You know, I wear jewelry for the face. But yes, Rue, I dance once, at least once, if not twice a week. Um, wow. 52 years old, I found a love for Latin and ballroom dance and I haven't stopped. It's amazing. Yeah, well, Michelle, some might say antique collector. Others might say hoarder. <laughs> you are somewhat correct. <laughs> we'll deal with that on another television show called Intervention. <laughs> Can we talk about the evolution of the wonderful Untucked? I mean, and why is such a popular extension of the series? Well, you know, uh, Randy Barbado, uh, one of our producers, uh, realized that uh, when the girls go backstage, he realized this early on, uh, you know, they really literally let their hair down. They take their hair off and they let their hair down. <laughs> and he thought, he thought, oh my goodness, this is a show right here. And we said early on, if you're not watching Untucked, you're only getting half the story. Because backstage, when they talk with themselves and they talk about their struggles and the, and the places where they, uh, they, 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 they're very sensitive or vulnerable, that's when you get the other side, the dark side of the moon. When you see the underbelly of the beast and we all have that and that ends up being the most powerful part of your experience they say that vulnerability is power well untucked shows the vulnerability of these seemingly 
fearless, gorgeous creatures. And, and that's why it's so powerful. You know, seeing the yin and the yang, um, the, the dark and the light of, of a human, you get to see the full evolution of them. And, and that's why Untuck is so important. You are, you just being so nice, RuPaul. It's the drama for me, honey. <laughs> that's it, that's it. it. They just get to act the fool because on stage, they're all calm, cool, and collected, trying to be proper in front of the judges. They go back there and it's on. It is on. That's and why I like that. Duck. Yes, and, and there's awesome. that too. There's that yes. too. Yes. <laughs> you know, on a little more serious note, um, uh, recently we've had some attacks, I believe, on the LGBTQ community. Um, a lot of misinformation has been presented out to folks. How do you feel that your show helps to combat and give pride to the LGBT um, community? You know, it's we, we've actually always been under attack because, you know, I love in The Wizard of Oz where Dorothy says, why is that witch after me? Why? She says, because she is envious of your joy, of your beauty, mm. of your love of color. And, you know, for that reason, we've always been under attack. We are people who follow our bliss and follow our joy. And regardless of what society says or the church or parents or whoever, we follow our heart and we do what we feel we need to do to live this life. Uh, so that will always be under attack. But, you know, our show uh, lifts up people who have chosen to dance to the beat of their own drummer. And we have uh, given a platform to many different people. You, you know, you, every demographic you can name, we, they're all, we're all here. Uh, and we shine a light on the beauty and the, uh, the tenacity of these people. So in essence, the people who watch our show around the world on streaming platforms around the world in small villages, whatever, they get to see their tribe and they get to see their tribe thrive in a way that's inspirational and that lifts them up and, and lets them know that there is a place for you. There are people who are like you out in the world who are thriving and are waiting to uh, have a cup of coffee with you. Definitely. That's the heartbeat of the show, I think, if I may add. I think the heartbeat is we are the voice of the underdogs. And I think that's what people relate to. They have a place where everybody, and I mean everybody, belongs. And that's why they love it so much, I think. Any last words to the, um, the Emmy people, the Academy? You know, we, we've been very fortunate uh, with our show. We, first of all, for, we, we were on the air for many years before uh, people <laughs> started paying attention to us, thankfully. And we got to cultivate and build this brand for many years before anybody really paid attention. We were on Logo for many years, which was a, you know, a, a little cable channel that uh, uh, allowed us to do whatever we wanted. So now here we are all these years later. I, I don't know how many years it's been, Michelle, but uh, uh, we have a good time doing it. So the awards are fantastic, but what we do this for is because we love it so, so much. And I, I appreciate all of the attention we've gotten from uh, the Emmy, the Academy, because it really recognizes all of the people who have allowed this show to, to get on the air and to, and to uh, continue to be produced. This show, the, the, the awards really represents all of the people behind the scenes, all of the people who, who picked us up at the airport for gigs uh, in Appleton, Wisconsin, or all of the people who um, let us sleep on their couch for those lean, hungry years. It represents um, the hard yards of doing something that isn't, um, uh, isn't, wasn't back then uh, uh, lifted up and applauded. You know, all those years of doing something because we loved it. Here we are, the payoff has been uh, being on the air for 13 years, I think, and then uh, getting all these awards and people recognizing it. So the awards are really uh, for all of the, the hard work we've put into it. Michelle? It's for the kids in Conway, Arkansas. It's for the kids in Bank Back Swamp, North Carolina. It's for all those kids who couldn't find a way out 
for whatever situation it is, you were just referring to, you know, um, the repression and the oppression of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, it's for all of them. And it, trust me, there is not a day that I am not beyond grateful for the opportunity to have, not just to do it for a living and be able to be a part of this incredible legacy, but for all those kids. And, and when I say kids, I mean, from the ages of five to 500, yeah. everybody around the world getting an opportunity to see a show like this that lets them know not only that they matter, but also they belong. No matter where they find their home and who they're with, they belong and they matter. And that's what it's about. So it does not go unnoticed or underappreciated or unappreciated. The fact that we we're getting all these nominations and awards, we are so honored and humbled to be in the company of the people that we're in the category with and categories. It's unbelievable. Ruse a Guinness world record holder now. Like it's, <laughs> it's really crazy coming from where we come from. It's like, yeah. So it doesn't go under unappreciated or unrecognized. We are so eternally grateful. Well, let's just keep it going. And thank you again for letting me be part of your family. Thank you for the wonderful entertainment. And thank you for this wonderful conversation, RuPaul and Michelle. Love you guys. We love you, Lonnie. Love you, Lonnie. Thank you. Thanks, Lonnie.